Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we were able to go about halfway on this problem. The problem was to find the output voltage as a function of time, an equation that describes that. In order to do that, we assume that the output voltage is going to be the difference between V1 and V2. And in the previous video, we found the equation that described V1 as a function of time. So now we need to find V2 as a function of time. And notice I kept some of what we did last time on the board. Remember what we did last time was we used this equation and then we took the derivative of this equation and then we found v2 and the derivative of v2 with respect to time and plugged it into this equation to make this equation an equation of v1 alone. Now we want to reverse that order. We want to use this equation to, in order to go ahead and substitute for v1 here and the derivative of v1 with respect to time to make this an equation of only v2. So here we can say that v1 is equal to v2 plus one-third, one-third, dv2 dt. And if we take the derivative of this, we can then say that dv1 dt is equal to the derivative of v2 with respect to time plus one-third, the second derivative of v2 with respect to time. And now we have v1 and the derivative of v1 with respect to time that we can plug into here and here. And now we'll have an equation of only v2. So let's do that. So here we end up with v2 is equal to twice v1. Now v1 is equal to this, that gives me 2v2 and twice this, so plus 2 thirds times the first derivative of v2 with respect to time. So that's 2 times v1 minus 20 and then here we have 1 half times the derivative. Well, let's see here, we don't have to write 1 half. I think we can just go ahead and multiply it right away. So plus one half times this, so it gives us plus one half times this, the first derivative of v2 with respect to time, and one half times this, that gives me plus one sixth the second derivative of v2 with respect to time, like that. And notice we now have an equation that only has v2 in it. So cleaning that up a little bit, we bring this across, we get 20 is equal to 2 of these minus 1, that gives me 1 V2. We have 2 thirds of the first derivative plus a half. If you take the common denominator to be 6, that gives me 4 6 plus 3 6 or 7 6 plus 7 6 times dV2 dt. And then we have plus 1 6 times the second derivative of v2 with respect to time. Now you may say, wow, that looks very similar to the equation we had in the previous video, and the answer is yes, it looks exactly the same, but the initial conditions are going to be different. I expect that because we're in a different location in the circuit. All right, so that said, uh, let's multiply everything by 6. So we get 120 is equal to and rearranging the order, we get dv, d2, v2 divided by time, or the second derivative, I should say, the second derivative of v2 with respect to time, then plus 7 dv2 dt, and plus 6 times v2. So again, we have our nice differential equation. To find the transient equation, we're going to find the characteristic equation set is equal to zero, so we have zero is equal to s squared plus seven s plus six, and then we found with the previous uh, video, we knew that s1 and s2 is going to be equal to minus one and minus six. All right, which means that again, we get the equation where v2 as a function of time is going to be equal to a e to the minus t plus b e to the minus 60 plus the steady state voltage. Steady state voltage. All right. Hmm. What's a steady state voltage? Well, it looks like it's going to be exactly the same as the steady state voltage here because once the capacitors fill up, no current flows, 
no voltage drop here, no voltage drop there, so the t volt there is 20, the voltage there will be 20 as well. So the steady state voltage can simply be replaced by 20 volts. So the equation looks exactly the same as it did for V1. The difference is the initial conditions are going to be different. So first of all, let's set time equal to zero in this equation. So we can say that V2 when time is equal to zero is equal to, and again we can say that the voltage there will be zero as soon as we turn on the, uh, the voltage here. The voltage there will be zero, the voltage there will be zero, so that's equal to zero, which is equal to, and we have A plus B plus 20, which means minus 20 is equal to A plus B. So that equation looks exactly the same. Wow, so far it's like a, a repeat from what we did before. But then if we take the first derivative of that, so we can say that uh, dv2 dt, which is equal to minus a e to the minus t minus 6b e to the minus 6t, and now we set the time equal to zero for that, what happens now? Well, notice here when we set the time equal to zero, the change in the voltage here had a value. It was 20 volts divided by one half. But this one was a 20 volts. All the current will flow to here. No current will flow to here. So the voltage at two at time equals zero had to be zero. And that's the difference between V1 and V2. So what we can say here is that, well, first of all, yeah, we can say that dV2 when time equals zero, well, when time equals zero, with respect to time is equal to zero, not to 40 as we found in the first equation with V1. And then we set that equal to this when it's equal to zero, so that's one, that's one, so we end up with minus A, minus 6B. All right, so far so good. So that's our second equation. Now we're going to add the two equations together. So we have minus 20 is equal to a plus b. So in this case, we have minus 20, the a's drop out, and here we have minus 6b. Oh, not 6b, minus 5b. And notice that b in this case is equal to 4. So if b is equal to 4, what is a equal to? Well, using this equation right here, we can say that minus 20 is equal to a plus 4, bring the 4 across, we have minus 24 is equal to a, and so in this case we have b is equal to 4 and a is equal to minus 24. So we have different values for a and b. All right, so then we plug that in here, and what do we get? All right, so, okay, where do we plug it in? We're going to plug it into this equation. We now have proper values for a and b, so now we can say that v2 and let me, let me make a little bit of room here, because otherwise we're not going to be able to fit it all together. So let me erase this portion. And so now we have V2 as a function of time is equal to minus A, but A was 24. Oh, oh I'm on the wrong one here. A. And A is 24, so minus 24 e to the minus t. B was a plus 4, so plus 4 e to the minus 6t plus 20. All right, so now we have V2, and remember that the output voltage was the difference between the two. So now we can write an equation for the output voltage. So V out as a function of time is equal to V1 minus V2. Here's V1, here's V2. So minus 16 minus a minus 24 is a plus 8. So that's 8e to the minus t, a minus 4, minus 4 is a minus 8, so that gives us minus 8 e to the minus 6 t, and 20 minus 20 is 0, and so this here simply then becomes the output voltage as a function of time, and we got that by simply subtracting V2 from V1. The hard part was finding V1 and V2, notice that the method was fairly similar, we used the one equation to come up with V1 and the other equation to come up with V2, and then here's the result when we subtract the two. And that is how it's done. Boy, that was quite a problem, wasn't it? It looks so simple. <laughs> it's just two capacitors and two resistors. 
But that's it. That's how it's done.